So, I'm not doing any weird entrances, not doing anything like that. No. I'm here to review the Raw that just ended from St. Louis, Missouri. Two thumbs up. They repeated. I was worried because of how good last week's was and how last week's ended. What are they going to do? How are they going to end it? I don't know. But, like, I'm going to get into it bit by bit, but, like, they set the tone well tonight. Last week's show, it was, like, I liked the opening angle last week with Steph, Stephanie and the Big Show, but this week's with Shawn Michaels and Randy Orton was very solid. Just, like, out of nowhere, have HBK come in, introduce the show, get that started, have that little thing, have that feud so you know there's that animosity there. Next week will be very interesting to see, but that was a great way to kick off the show. Um... And then next, then we had the uh, let's my remote the powers of PVR to pretty much determine what happened bit by bit. See now, just in Canada, but like even yeah, like I'm just fast forwarding through it now past the opening segment. But again, like they're doing like to open the show with this was good. And it's not like Daniel Bryan coming out or anything. Like I think we're gonna see something between the three men next week. Like, next week should be a good delivered go-home show. Oh, right, they had the match between Randy Orton versus The Miz. Duh. Doi, excuse me. God, Lord, I have such a weak memory. Like, fast forward. But, like, with this match, like, when Miz came out, had his little mean streak. Oh, right, that's what happened. Um, yeah, when Miz had his little mean streak going on, like, I really was into it. Like, how you saw Miz come out and just want to, like, kick the crap out of Randy Orton. Um, this will work a lot better once I get the internet open, just so I can, like, fly through and everything. Because, um, as appears, I my memory's gone a bit. But, no, Miz versus Orton, like, when Miz came out and had his little mean streak going, it was good. It was good to see that, because it's, like, showing that, yeah, he can, like, take a beating, and then he can give one back, like, right back to you. So it's basically, like, boom, boom. And even the way they ended the match when Wyatt's music hit, like, I wasn't sure where Rowan and Harper were going to be in the ring and basically hurt him. Well, not hurt him, excuse me, but, like, you know what I mean. Uh, like, that. Yeah. but then just having them on the stage, he turns around, takes an RKO, one, two, three, Orton gets the victory. Very well done. Because you know, if you read spoilers like I do or go on, like, all the websites, you've heard Bray Wyatt is hurt. So I am expecting something for Survivor Series between the two men. Hopefully they really bring back a 5 on 5 match. That's all we can hope for. Uh, next up, we had Santino Morella versus Fandango for nothing like this. Uh, it was an um, alright match. I really like the way the end of Hassan Ray got involved. How he moved out of the way, went for the Cobra, went there, missed her. He got a sunset flip. I don't know what it's called, the Boston Roll-Up or something like that. Get the 1-2-3 for the nice for the victory like that. It was, it was an undercard match, but it was very well done. Kudos to both men. Next up, we had uh, the commercial break, and then we had the thing with Paul Heyman in the back, which was stupid. The Xavier Woods, the Cena video, which I liked. It's just, like, as you can tell. And, um, like, there and everything. And then Los Matadores comes out, and I'm like, oh, great. It's, you know what this is becoming? The Harlem Globetrotters versus the Washington Generals. If, for those of you, who, you pro most of you probably are familiar with this, but the Harlem Globetrotters are basically a team who win all the time. And then you have a team with, who the Washington Generals always played them. Never been able to beat them. It's been like once or twice. That's what it's turning into. And they, I, I like 3MB. I like what they're doing. It's good comedy for the kids. Like, I don't like it. Just give them someone else to face. Primetime players aren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. But they need to have tough opponents. They need to get, they need to get kicked in the butt. And then they had the promo with uh, Contra and Stephanie. And then, like, weak, weak, weak. Like, it was good once the yes came out, Daniel Bryan did that, and then, but then Alberto Del Rio kind of killed the mood of it. Like, I was like, yes, but then it was like, yes, yes, yes. It's like, my God, Hunter, you're better than this. You are better than this, Hunter. Like, I don't know. Up next, Beat the Clock Challenge, Ryback right versus R-Truth. Uh, I had a family going back to residence, so uh, it was with Kenny Thanksgiving, but then... uh. Yeah, so, like, I figured squash match, and then I went up and said my goodbyes before uh, they got dropped, she got dropped off at school. And then I come back down, and our truth <laughs> clean on the canvas. Uh, 5.44 was the time to beat. And then it's still the coming thing. Tensai and Brodus Clay versus the Real Americans. Um, 
out of all the matches the Real Americans have lately, this had to be the weakest one. And yes, this includes the comedy. This includes a uh, tag team with Santino Morella and the Great Collie. This is probably the weakest match in a while. Like, it was back and forth action was good, but then the swing, you knew he was struggling with it because he only did it a few times. So, like, with Collie, it was fine, but others, it was just like, mm. I mean, uh, sweet tea. Samina Snuka versus Brie Bella. They're going back to old Divas matchups. Like, do you want Divas to get good ratings? Because, like, my friends is, uh, like, on YouTube, Hashtag Raw, I'm like, yeah, you picked a bad time to watch this, man. You go to the bathroom. Go get, go to your cabinets, get your drinks, get your, get your drinks, get your snacks, get whatever you need to watch the show, man, because it's a freaking Divas matchup. And Tamina won, obviously. CM Punk, Curtis Axel with 13 seconds left, though. This was another matchup that was good. But what surprised me was, was at the ending where you had Punk come out, do his whole spiel about everything, like, oh yeah, and then it's going to be a two-on-one handicap match. But the Hell in the Cell feature, a lot of people are questioning it. I like it personally. Um, I'll get into a Hell in a Cell video probably coming out sometime mid-next week, uh, once everything's more set aside. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Alberto Del Rio. Nothing special. Like, this match could have been better, but then they include that whole back age thing. The best part was honestly when Randy Orton went in the room, he said surprise, and the girls screamed. It's a little rape humor. It might be inappropriate for some of you, but I, it's the funny spot that I found hilarious. Yeah, I know. Shoot me. And then the tag team matchup. This tag, like, tag team matchup, like, I'm giving solid props. Solid. Like, it was like, it was good, 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 good. And then the steel chair came out and they started the three-on-one attack. I'm like, great, this match is going to suck. But the ending, I was, I like, the ending, I was good, like, everything else. And then I see you're someone in the crowd, I'm like, who can be this? Brandon Bryan? And then the big show comes out, like, I start marking out for the big show and everything. But right away, I honestly expected Hunter to come out, like, pedigree, Cody, and get the pin, one, two, three, shield retains. I expected that. But then, like, when, as he was coming out, sorry, my battery's going to die soon. Uh, but, yeah, like, it went from, like, it was, like, the whole match was good. And then they did a little bad second for about a minute or so. And then they ended it great. This was a great way to end the show. Like, absolutely perfect. No complaints at all whatsoever. Guys, Keep it up. You're doing a good job. Like, match of the night was probably this one. Yeah. This one, and, but for overall, like, yeah, just because, like, even though it was no DQ, whatever, but then now you know, because they advertise tomorrow night, Dolph Ziggler's going to win. Watch. Or you're going to start to see, like, a dismemberment of the shield. What I would like to see, honestly, is a triple threat match. Down the road sometime. Maybe at Hell in a Cell Survivor Series. So if Dean Ambrose keep his title, but then basically he comes a chop as like, oh, I'm the guy. Like, I'm the guy. Like, kind of like break him up a little bit. But breaking them up, I don't know what to do because you, you, like, you could have Seth Rollins and the thing be a cohesive unit. But it's like breaking up Nexus and creating the core. That went from going good to bad. You can't, I, like, you, like I'd like to see it happen with a triple threat at TLC or Survivor Series. But I don't think it will work. I think... Dean Ambrose will lose. Hell in a Cell, you'll get the rematches. Watch. One of them's going to be in the kickoff match. Just just watch. Watch. It will happen. Anyway, tonight's show was good. No, com like, the middle segments were lagging with the one Divas match was bad and the uh, Stephanie Hunter promo. But apart from that, good show. I give it an 8. And I will see you guys later. Uh, WWE Shop's tempting me right now to go buy some merch. So I might. Take care.